I'm proudly coloured. I'm an African koi son. I'm South African more than coloured. Because I'm doing what I want, and I can make it about you. Talk about the Americans. I'm a koisan. Because it's totally clear. I'm proudly colored. I can make it first than I do. I can do what I want. You know, just embrace yourself. You're beautiful, just the way that you are. I'm Janine Fortin. I'm a Cape Townian, and I'm classified as a colored. But what does the term clear mean, and what was there in the couple? The term colored was coined in South Africa during the apartheid regime to describe people of mixed race. This has resulted in South Africa being the only place in the world where this term is used and accepted. The, the themes that I and the concepts that I work with within my, my written work is really um, celebrating your own identity and your own voice. Um, and, and your own voice meaning your dialect, Tixi, Kaikisu, you know what I mean? You gotta write what you know. And what I know is being colored and it's flipping awesome, <laughs> okay? Because nobody can like pinpoint anything that we do. That's like so cool. <laughs> you must know how we do it, not in a circle in the club. You dance in a circle with your brother. And then you put your dog down, you dance around your dog. <laughs> People will always define themselves racially in relation to whatever politics surrounds them. So certain people will say, I am colored, not simply because personally they want to be colored, but also because it serves a certain political purpose at a certain moment. I mean, there was a moment when people were claiming this whole Khoisan thing, and it had a lot to do with the fact that post-1994, certain people felt marginalized and they felt somehow that they needed to define their authenticity and their difference. So that became in many ways a strategic way of claiming a sense of self, claiming rights, which is not to say that they weren't personally invested, but I think that that personal investment always ex coexists with political, political goals and interests. A close friend of mine, Tasseline Martin, felt like the term colored had negative connotations and embarked on a journey in search of a cultural heritage. I've actually gone around, um, visited family, and asked them for some information on my um, ancestors. And last night I received this book, and it is um, the Gelderbloem um, lineage, you know? And this was uh, compiled in 2003. It was so am amazing to see that um, this is actually people that was born in the 1800s and this is my family. And it opens up a, a, a whole world that you never knew existed. And yeah, it can only better you as a person. Because I mean, when you sit here, you think, okay, this is me and this is all I know about me. But if you go into stuff like this, it's like, Yo, ik is meer as net die persoon wat hier sit. Coloured people were defined as a buffer group in terms of the whole divide and rule strategy of the apartheid government and in the Western Cape especially. Um, they had preferential treatment in relation to those who are classified African. Um, and they were used politically, they were co-opted. So we know that history. Um, and that history survives in the present. Um, and I think that history has also left many coloured people feeling a sense of somehow being out of the mainstream. The mainstream being defined in terms of white and black. So that situation of being a buffer group has consequences for the present. When I, as a child, asked my mother something, because I think um, it was back in the 80s and my mom and I went to a shop. But my mom had to go around the back. And, and I remember going, because I believe words are very powerful. And the moment a word is spoken to a child or to a human being, without any facts, without even questioning it, we accept that that's how it is. And that is what I believe has been passed down to our race, to our communities throughout colonial time. Because white we see as superior. Even though now everything's cool, everything's fine, the moment my mother is in front of another white person, she bows her head. 
And I ask you why? She changes, and, and, and again, she changes instantly. According to race, I would identify myself as a black person because I grew up at a time when it was very important to define yourself racially in terms of uh, your political consciousness as black. I grew up under black consciousness. It is nooit a color traversie van ons as koisans. My ma is trots leerling. We walked around the University of the Western Cape, and after three hours, no young colored student identified themselves as black. I'm not black, I'm not white, I'm colored. I can purely colored, so you can see. My keep you colors, I can colored, but I can see it's not my stake in me. I'm a gram groot groot, I love you, I know me. Father Tani, it's okay. I'm proudly colored, I don't identify myself as being black. If you as a colored woman choose to be called something different, hey, that's cool. Not problem. Not black is not black. You as a colored woman choose to be called something different, hey, cool. No problem. Whatever makes your boat flow, baby. You see, but at the end of the day, we're human beings, and that's what it really comes down to. My mom was Islamic, my dad is a purebred Khoisan. And at the end of the day, you know, is it important that our clearing people believe that clearing is not just in the KPT. Okay? Cape Colors don't exist only in Mitchell's play. While older generations either accept or reject the term, due to its historically and politically negative connotations, the younger generation have created a new sense of identity around the term colored, free from the limits, pain and suffering of our history. There's a gradual move towards identifying as purely and proudly South African, a term that unifies all races, cultures, languages, traditions and dialects in this land we all call home. If I think about the way that my students define themselves, they'll quite sort of, without thinking about the politics of it, say, I'm colored. And that's considered a fact. Whereas when I was a student, to say you are colored was just a no-no. But I think many young people today, for them, it somehow is somehow neutral. It just refers to where you live, or your relatives and the community that you are part of and your frame of reference. What your identity has to do with it, your personality, your behavior, it's not your race. Because my race does not influence how I think. It's my cultural, what I'm accustomed to. Well, if you look at these two pictures there in front, they look white. You go through the book, then you'll see as darker faces. So you can see the mixture of um, races happening down the line. And that's a fairer face, but that looks more, you know, like your coloured type of person. I'm pushing my back on the sidewalk, but you don't have that ride in it. You have, you know, pushing and you're talking to your breath. Really, Anna? Oh my God, you're kidding me. Really? Damn! That's what happens to colours when we travel. <laughs> it's not what you're laughing at. That's why. Why do you find that humorous? And it's and, and most of the time, you know, especially in our communities as color people, we laugh at the at, at the familiarity of something or someone. You know, it's like me becoming my auntie going neat. You see, suddenly you know someone like that. And again, white people will laugh. Not because they're laughing at colored people, they know someone like that, and that is what makes us South African at the end of the day. You know, I go to my Islamic family, and, and then we have, we do we buka and everything like that. You see, I am, it, it's, it's being able to coexist. I think it's so important for us to think about where this originates, where this kind of feeling of being in between and somehow not fitting in, never belonging. It originates in, a, in a, a system that was very pernicious. You know, it was a system that was determined to divide people and make them feel that that's where they had to be. So, I mean, for me, the broader project is just to break down these identities totally. But, I mean, that's a very easy thing to say. It just doesn't happen. Um, once we can start um, embracing ourselves as South Africans, as a whole first, then I believe 
you can go and look at your identity. But the point is, we need to get along as South Africans. We need to start tolerating one another as simple South Africans. There's other colors who don't like other colors because of the way they sound. There's black people, you know, that cause us don't like the Zulus, X, Y, Z. We can go back and forth. But the crux of the matter is being a united South African front. That is really what we need to start uh, uh, um, fighting for. It is no secret that colored culture and identity is deeply rooted in music, the Kapsa Klopsa and humor. Because through this, we celebrate our lives, our sorrows, our joys and our history. As a colored person, I acknowledge that my bloodline is elements of the Khoisan, the first Europeans and slaves that were present in the Cape many years ago. So to me, the term colored is simply a testimony of my diverse ancestry. If you have any stories in your community, email us at info at groundup.org.za or visit our website on www.groundup.org.za. You can also follow us on Twitter at groundup_news. underscore news.